Well, hi there, and welcome back to another episode of the All Around Growth Podcast, a show that provides insight and tools to build the life and homestead of your dreams. My name is Rob Kaiser, and I am your host. Today is Thursday, March 31st, 2022. This is episode number 316 of of the show, if I'm not mistaken. And since it is Thursday, we are going to take a look at the Old Farmer's Almanac today and in the show notes you can find a link with today's date March 31st 2022 and you can that link will take you to oh let me mess with my keys here there we go that link will take you to the Old Farmer's Almanac link for today where you can find who was born on this day what happened today in history learn that there's 82 days until summer begins some questions of the day like how long can an average person live without eating a puzzle of the day a little poem that reads as follows mindful of you the sodden earth in spring and all the flowers that in the springtime grow and dusty roads and thistles and the slow rising of the round moon all throats that sing Edna St. Vincent Millay there's articles in today's email which will be linked to in the show notes like I said 10 things to consider when balcony gardening hydrangea varieties for every garden lavender scones and how an article describing how slow walking is good for your health we're going to talk about hydrangeas today but if you've ever heard of slow walking it may sound too good to be true but simply walking slowly and consciously is good for your health not only does it burn a surprising number of calories and decrease joint stress, but it also adds an element of meditation and mental well-being to our lives. Now, that's interesting. There is also more, such as how to make your own seed starting mix, and it looks like there's a video on how to do that. So, guys, check out the show notes for the Old Farmer's Almanac, because there is a wealth of There's just a wealth of content in the Old Farmer's Almanac. But like I said, we are going to talk about hydrangea varieties for every garden. And why are we going down this road? Well, guys, for those of you who don't know, for those of you who may be new to this show and aren't overly familiar with my background, I live on a farm and homestead but the reality is we we're we're not really farmers nor are we homesteaders we are a suburban family it's my parents and I and this was a property that they purchased that uh, was intended to be their retirement home I was chasing the corporate dream so to speak living an entirely different life and in order to maintain the CAUV tax status agricultural use value status of the land they decided to plant some blueberries and begin doing some things at the farmers market for some additional income Um, all during this time even while chasing the corporate dream i was in the green industry just working in forestry in a different capacity but i work full-time at a tree farm i have been doing so for the last eight years which is this is my eighth season so really the last seven years it's difficult to think about but i started working in the green industry in 
nurseries and garden centers specifically at the age of 19. So for over two decades, I have been working with plants and I'm very familiar with hydrangeas. So let's talk about this article, which is, um, I'm not sure who this is written by, but let's talk about which hydrangea is right for you. Now, if extended bloom in the summer garden is what you're looking for, hydrangeas are right for you. They come in a wide array of types, from big leaf hydrangeas and panicle varieties to distinct oak leaf and rugged mountain hydrangeas. There's photos in this article, links for more. Um, definitely check it out. I will, like I said, I'll simply link to this. Now, hydrangeas are a safe bet for a lot of this I'm paraphrasing as I'm reading or just glazing the article as I drive here, guys. So I'm just gonna try and focus on the different types of hydrangeas here and more specifically the different species along with the common names. So we've got the big leaf hydrangea, right, which is hydrangea macrophylla. And there are a couple different types of this hydrangea. This is the most common one you're gonna see at garden centers, big box stores. Um, they are commonly referred to as mop head and lace cap type hydrangeas. Uh, they're hardy to about zone six, zone five. Um, I think you can push it, you know, you're just gonna have some some, some more difficult winter dieback and things like that. But hey, try it, try anything. That's what, that's what gardening is all about. Mop heads have big, big flowers, lace caps, whatever, you know, are pretty self-explanatory. So there's all sorts of varieties with this and there's all sorts of, you know, patented plants like endless summer, and basically endless summer is in the whole series of endless summers like twist and shout they're all just improved varieties of old varieties like all summer beauty and you know uh, varieties that have been around for decades varieties like all summer beauty date back you know a long time and there's something to be said for these old uh heritage cultivars of plants because they're kind of becoming increasingly hard to find <clears throat> because everybody wants to grow out these little dainty cutesy patented varieties for all of these cookie cutter development homes cluster homes where everything is just jam-packed and we need everything to be upright, column, or espalier, apple trees, you know, just very, uh, I don't know, foreign to the, to the, to the flowing landscape plants of the old homestead, but that's another story for another time, how the landscape has changed over the generations. And as new, the new path of living has been arranged for us, right? So in addition to hydrangea macrophylla and the many myriad varieties, we also have panicle hydrangeas, which is hydrangea paniculata. And the panicle hydrangea is, I don't know, apparently, in this article, it's been gaining in popularity. Um, I feel like I should know some of these trends, but after working in the industry for so long, but um, whatever. It is, <clears throat> it's an easy plant to grow, these, these paniculata type hydrangeas. They just, they, they grow, they bloom, but they can get wild and, and, and kind of, you know, wacky. So, you know, Pruning is kind of the, the thing. So um, what's, what's nice is that the panicle hydrangeas, okay, so pruning hydrangeas is an entirely different thing and I'll see if I can get to that. So um, 
botanical hydrangeas bloom on new growth. So basically, after they bloom, you know, cut it back, they bloom on new growth every year. So there's all sorts of varieties. You can read about those. Probably the most popular botanical uh, type hydrangea that you're going to see on the market today is uh, something like a limelight or a vanilla strawberry hydrangea, right? So there's all kinds of panicle type hydrangeas. Another type of hydrangea that we've got is a what's called a smooth hydrangea. All right, and that is hydrangea arborescence. This is what some people call a snowball bush, but snowball bush is also kind of like a viburnum. Snowball bush is some parts of the country is also a mock orange. So let's just talk about hydrangea arborescence, all right? Um, popular one is going to be Annabelle. <clears throat> and I am getting closer and closer to work as I ramble and ramble as hydrangeas get my my gears grinding but not as much as viburnums you know if there's probably a favorite landscape plant that i have it's viburnums god as i think about this you know <clears throat> i enjoy doing this podcast don't get me wrong but it's it I, I never really had you know an objective with it in the first place but uh recently in talking about the homestead update got some feedback in the group from brian aka scrambling what's up and uh he gave me some feedback that the fermented foods idea york meadow farm fermented foods was kind of has a a bit of a alliterative kick to it and that the old man was on the right track with some thinking and uh <clears throat> i don't know i think about having a little garden center at the homestead um, just as part of the overall operation there and uh, maybe having a podcast for the farm a podcast for the little garden center not necessarily a daily thing but a, a weekly thing who knows because there's all sorts of things like this that I could talk about and uh, I just know a fair amount about. I'm starting to slow my drive because I still want to keep talking. Next up on the list, we've got oak leaf hydrangeas, hydrangea quercifolia. Awesome plant, awesome plant. Uh, you know, some of these other types, paniculata types, will take a bit more sun. Um, these will take a bit more shade. We've also got mountain hydrangeas, which is not very common, hydrangea serrata. Uh, climbing hydrangea, which is like a vine type hydrangea, hydrangea um, anomala subspecies, Petiolaris. And guys, I'm just going to close with a quick word on pruning because, you know, there is a lot about hydrangeas and there's a lot about pruning. So here it is pruning hydrangeas, panicle type hydrangeas, hydrangea paniculata and hydrangea arborescence or smooth hydrangeas are pruned before the flower buds are formed all right so in late winter we prune back paniculata and arborescence type hydrangeas these varieties blossom on new wood so we, we head back the paniculatas and head back the arborescence in the fall a big leaf hydrangeas and oak leaf hydrangeas all right macrophyllas and quercifolias are pruned right after the flowers fade in the summertime okay so these varieties bloom on old wood previous years growth you got me so we got macrophyllas and quercifolia type hydrangeas are pruned right after the flowers fade in the summer. So think like deadheading perennials with macrophyllas and oak leaves. We're gonna deadhead them just like we're gonna deadhead uh, whatever, like your cone flowers or something or your annuals. So there's another article in 
this article right at the end on how to prune hydrangeas and when to prune hydrangeas, which will go into a little bit more depth there. So check that out, guys. And uh, if you like what you hear, then subscribe to the show. If you like what you hear, share it with a friend. Share it on social media. I am not one to uh, promote this endeavor too much. I'll do some sharing here and there when it's appropriate, but uh, I am sincerely curious about the organic growth of this based on based on the audience and how you guys choose to share it. So anyways, thank you for tuning in today, guys. We are just about to wrap it up here as I pull into the day job. I hope that you have a great Thursday. We are almost at the closure of the work week. And uh, yeah, make it a great day. This is Rob Kaiser, and thank you.